Hi everyone. So I think we're live now. Um, it'd be great if you could let me know if you can see and hear me in the comments. Um, welcome to the session today. My name's Serena and I'm going to be teaching you how to do some beginners embroidery. So um, can people see me? Can people hear me? Hopefully my Wi-Fi is working. Um, yep, so I'll just I'll just get on with with what we need to do today. So um, as I said, I'm going to be teaching you how to do some embroidery this evening. And this session is part of upcycling week at the Virtual Village Hall. And this is just one of many ways that you can um, do some upcycling. And um, I'm very interested in crafts. So you might recognize me from the Great British Sewing Bee. Um, I won the last, um... oh yes, people can hear me. That's great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, my take on upcycling is very much related to crafts. Um, I love sewing and that's my main passion. And um, so, yeah, I won the latest series of the Great British Sewing Bee. So that's why I'm here today. And I want to teach you all about embroidery. So as well as sewing, I also love doing other crafts uh, like embroidery, knitting. Can't quite do crochet yet, but I'm getting there. Um, and yes, I love um, upcycling and trying to be a bit more sustainable in my crafting as well. So embroidery is a great skill to learn um, to upcycle garments and bags um, just to give them a bit of a freshen up. Or you can also cover up stains and holes with them um, in garments as well with embroidery. And it's just a great way to personalise things. Um, so let's get started. Um, so I thought I'd take you through the things you need to start, um, you know, the, the bits and pieces you need to start embroidery and then teach you some of the, the basic stitches that you need to um, to start creating your own designs. So hopefully at the end of it, you know, the basic stitches that you can use to create things. And there really aren't very many stitches that I use when I do designs. So I've got a couple with me to show you. So my latest one is this orange. Um, that I embroidered onto this second hand t-shirt that one of my friends gave me. Um, and it just uses very basic stitches, um, but you can create some really nice designs with it. So in terms of what we need for embroidery, we need uh, something to create our design on. So for the purpose of, of today, I'm just gonna be using this little nice piece of um, old fabric, <laughs> um, just so to show you the basics. Um, but you can obviously do this onto anything you want to. A t-shirt is a great idea. You can place it in the middle um, or you can also do it onto a tote bag or something like that. You need an embroidery hoop and these are quite easy to find. You can get them in craft shops or online and um, you need some, some scissors, some embroidery needles or hand sewing needles are fine as well um, and your thread so you can buy these as, as well. Um, in local craft shops or online as well. So that's everything we need to get started. Um, and you also need something to draw um, your design onto your fabric with. So um, chalk or fabric pen or something. Don't tell Esme, but I do only have a biro with me today because I'm not at home. Um, so I've had to make do, but um, something that can rub off is great. Um, so it's nice to see where people are tuning in from. So hello to everyone that's joined so far. Um, and yeah, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is prepare our fabric or our um, garment that we're going to be embroidering on. And today we're just going to be doing basic stitches. So we don't need to draw a design onto it yet. But at this point, um, for me to do a project, I would draw my design onto, onto the, the fabric before I do anything to it. So then what we want to do is place our fabric into our embroidery hoop. I'm going to tilt my camera down so you can see a bit better. So what you want to do is lay your fabric out nice and flat in front of you. Mine, um, mine should, should, should have been ironed, but I didn't, so we move on. Um, and then what you want to do is, so you've got your embroidery hoop and it has two parts. So this is the inner part without, um, so the outer part has the, the knob on it and then the inner part doesn't. So we want to take the inner part and place this underneath our fabric. And lie our fabric nice and flat on top of it. Now, if you're embroidering onto a garment, you want to make sure that you're only um, putting the section of fabric that you're going to be embroidering into, onto through the hoop. So basically you don't want to 
be embroidering through both sides of a t-shirt if that makes sense so if you're using a t-shirt or something you want to put the inside of your hoop through the middle so you're only catching one layer of fabric into your hoop so yes we have we have our inner hoop down and then we want to take our outer hoop and place it directly on top like this and if you need to you can use this uh, this little knob to open or close the hoop um, if you need um, a bit more leeway to put it onto the fabric so you just push it down like that and then you'll see the fabric is still a bit creased so what you want to do is start tightening the hoop using the knob and as you're doing that you can start pulling the fabric so that it's a bit more taut across the hoop because we want to the whole point of adding this hoop on is so that we're stitching onto a nice tight piece of fabric um, because any if it's slack then the stitches aren't going to turn out as nice so we want to just make sure that our fabric is nice and tight so you can see as I'm tightening this here those creases from me not ironing it are sort of um, disappearing a little bit because the fabric is becoming more taut so you just want to keep going and keep tightening the hoop until it's nice and secure and your fabric is nice and tight. Um, do people have much experience with embroidery or hand sewing? I know this is an embroidery a beginner's class but um, it's also applicable to people who have a bit of experience so um, if people do that's absolutely fine everyone's welcome and hopefully you still enjoy. So now we should have um, our fabrics in our hoop and you can see it's nice and flat. Let me move my needle so I don't cut myself. It's nice and flat and it's not very slack at all. There's not much movement there when I tap it. Oh, you've done cross stitching. I've never, I've never um, really tried cross stitching. It's one that I need to, I need to have a go at. That's fine to be a total novice as well. That's what we love. It's a beginner's class. Everyone's welcome and everyone can do it. So, um, and it's fine if you've not done it for a long time as well. It's one of those things that you do pick up um, quickly again, I think. So now we have our fabric prepared. And if we were creating a design, we would also have our design drawn onto the fabric ready to embroider. So the next thing we need to do is um, prepare our needle and thread. So, of course, when you're buying your thread, you want to buy the colours that you need to complete your specific project. Um, and I just have a few colours here today, just a couple of greens and pink, just um, as a um, bit of a uh, demonstration, just random colours I picked. So with embroidery thread, it's a bit different to thread that you would, um, you know, put in a sewing machine. So it's quite thick and it's made up of individual strands. Um, and they're usually six strands in the thread. But what we want to do is we only want to be embroidering with a, two or three of these threads, uh, depending on the size of your needle that you're using and the, de the design that you're creating. But I usually embroider with two threads. So the first thing that we need to do is separate out our threads. So you can do this, just, just gently unravel your, your threads so that you can see the individual ones a bit more clearly and then just grab onto a couple of them. Try and grab onto ones that are next to each other because that will make this a bit easier. And then you can just gently pull them apart and the threads should start to separate. Sometimes they bunch up a wee bit, but that's okay. You can just take your time and start unwinding them until you reach the end. So I should have said before, cut a length of thread before you do this because otherwise you, you can't unravel the whole spool of thread. So you want to have cut a length of thread. Um, people say about the length of your arm or something like that. And then you want to unwind it. So now we have just two strands of the embroidery thread and this is what we're going to be sewing with. So the first thing we need to do is thread it into our needle. Um, sometimes this can be a bit tricky. So a good thing to do is take a nice sharp pair of scissors and snip the end to make sure it's nice and clean. And you can also wet the end with a bit of saliva if, if you need to, to get it through the end of your needle. Sometimes it can be a bit 
a bit tricky, but luck has, uh, I've been lucky today, so I've been able to thread mine quite quickly. But especially with embroidery thread, sometimes it takes a few goes, but that's fine. And then on the other end of our thread, um, we want to create a couple of knots on top of each other, and this is going to stop the design from unraveling, basically. So just create a couple of knots right on top of each other. There you go. Can you see that? Just like that. So now we have our thread and you just want to double back the thread just by about 10 centimeters so, or so. And this is just going to prevent it coming um, out of the needle when we're doing our design. And then at the other end, we have our knot. So now we've got our fabric ready, we've got our thread ready and we're ready to go. <laughs> Um, yes, so uh, the first thing we're going to be doing is the most basic stitch. So we're going to be learning how to do a running stitch. Um, so this is very easy and we're just going to practice uh, the first few stitches we're going to do are all stitches that form a line. So we can just practice these um, straight onto our hoop. I think it's it's fine not to draw, not to draw a line on. It's quite good practice actually to try and um, keep the stitches straight if you can. So we're going to go in from the back of our hoop. So this part of the hoop with the, the knob on that's visible, this is the front of our design. So we're going to be going in from the back and you just want to bring the needle up at any point. We're just practicing, so it doesn't need to be perfect. It can be anywhere on your hoop. And then we want to insert the, the needle. Um, we're going to be trying to form a, a straight line. So we want to insert the needle back in but a centimetre away. So we've created one stitch. And then we're now at the back of our fabric. So again, we want to insert the needle about a centimetre away, keeping as straight as possible, which is a bit difficult when you're holding the hoop away from your face. So now you can see we're starting to, we formed a gap with that stitch. And then we want to continue our line. So putting uh, the needle in again about a centimetre away. And we just want to keep doing that. And we want to try and keep the stitches as even as possible and the line as straight as possible if you can. And again, you can vary the length of these stitches. So I said about a centimetre, but that doesn't have to be exact. You can make it, them a bit longer or a bit shorter. Um, I wouldn't say, I would say don't make them too long um, because then the thread becomes a bit lax and it might catch on things. Um, but you can make them a bit shorter if you, if, if that's what your design calls for. So let's just practice this stitch um, just for a couple of minutes, just to get used to um, threading the needle and um, moving it in and out of the fabric. So again, we're just trying to make them as even as possible going in a straight line. And if you want to, you can then try and practice curving the line a little bit because when um, we do um, designs rather than just practicing, it's unlikely, or uh, it depends on what your design is, but a lot of the time um, we're not going to be sewing in straight lines. Um, so it might be a circle or if you're doing flowers or anything really, you'll probably be going on a bit of a curve. So it's quite good to practice just tilting where you're stitching to start creating a bit of a curve. And again, just doing it nice and slowly. Practice, there's no rush. And I find um, that's why I love embroidery and hand stitching so much because there is no rush really um, and it's a nice um, it's a nice task that always makes me feel quite relaxed I think and hopefully you'll see that too. So you can see I've started to gently form some curves in my line and you can take you can take the line anywhere you want to really on your hoop just continuing and when you're creating designs, you also don't need to draw them onto the fabric first. I just like to do that because um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. But if you want to, you can just draw the designs with the needle and thread. 
that's also fine. There, there are no set rules to what you want to embroider, so go for it. Okay, so I'll finish my line there. So you can see I did um, straight stitches and then practiced doing a bit of a curve. So to finish off a line of embroidery, so usually you would keep stitching until the thread has run out or there's only a little bit of thread left. And then you want to um, have your needle and thread on the back of your design. And then what I like to do is tie a couple of knots as close to um, there as possible. I'm gonna have to put this down to do that. But you'll be able to see, you can use the needle and the spare bit of thread to tie a couple of knots right close to the fabric. And that just secures the stitches. And then with the spare thread, you can, um, use some of the stitches in the back of the design to tuck um, the spare thread into. And that's of course easier when you have more design going. And once you've done that, you just want to take your scissors and snip the thread really close. And then you've got a nice tidy back. And then at the front, you've got a nice neat line um, with no visible raw thread. So that is a running stitch and that's a really good stitch um, to use to outline things or to start creating designs. Um, it's great for leaves and things like that if you want to do something um, botanical. Um, how's, everyone, how's everyone getting on with their running stitches? Do you need a bit more time to practice? Or how are you, how are you finding um, practicing the stitches? Sometimes it takes a bit of getting used to um, before you feel more confident to do designs, but that's what um, this session is for, practicing the basic stitches. So hopefully people have got the hang of the running stitch. And these sessions um, will also be available to watch back in time as well. So um, if you want to listen to the explanation again, you can go on to the Virtual Village Hall Facebook page and YouTube and the session will be there. So you can go back and watch it again if you want to. So that was our first stitch. So we're gonna move on now and we're gonna learn how to do a back stitch. And again, this is a stitch that creates a line of your design. And so it's also really great for outlining and um, to create the basis of your design. So again, you want to prepare your thread, you want to double double the thread back a little bit and tie a knot, a couple of knots in the end of it. So in order to backstitch, the first thing we need to do, so we've prepared our thread and we go in from the back of the fabric. And again, you can just come up anywhere in your hoop. And the next thing you do is insert your needle. Again, I'm gonna use about a centimeter stitches, but you can vary that depending on what you want it to look like. Oh, that's a good idea, um, Lisa. Um, just watch now and then, then have a go later on. That's a good way to do it. Um, so the first thing we've done, we've made one stitch and our needles at the back of our fabric. So then we want to come up about a centimeter away. Let me make sure, like that. And in order, so, so the back stitch creates a continuous line, whereas the running stitch has gaps in it, the back stitch is going to create a continuous line with no gaps. So what we want to do now is we want to move our needle backwards on the line and insert it right next to where the first stitch ended. And often you can actually insert it into the same gap in the fabric. So can you see there? You're going to... Um, then create a stitch going backwards. And that's gonna create a nice continuous line. So then we're gonna to have to move our needle forward about two centimeters this time so that we come up a centimeter further along our line. Let me just make sure, there we go. And then we just want to keep repeating that. So then we move the needle backwards and insert it into our fabric right next to our previous stitch. And you can see already, this is creating a continuous line um, that we can use in our designs. Um, I'm Currently, this is the only embroidery class that I'm doing, Shona, but if people like it, then that's that's great. And maybe I can do more in the future. That's, that's a great idea. 
um that would be quite nice but yes yeah, so we just want to continue um doing our back stitching again practicing um making this first of all we're going to practice making this into a straight line while we get the hang of it so just continually moving the stitches along and then backwards and again it might take you another wee second just to make sure that it's nice and neat and that you're going directly next to the previous stitch but I always find with embroidery and hand stitching it's worth taking the extra bit of time on to make sure that it's um, that it's nice and neat because you'll be much happier with the end result I think and of course this technique uses a bit more thread than the running stitch just because we're continually going backwards and forwards so you might find that um, you get less design out of the same amount of thread um, that's just the way the way it is so let me just continue doing this and again you can practice going straight and then you can also practice curving your lines to get used to that feeling I'm interested to know if anyone has been to any other virtual village hall um, upcycling week classes yet during this week we're early on in the week so I think there's a lot um, a lot coming up but it looks like there's loads of really interesting things to go and to go and learn how to do so again just practicing curving the line a little bit and it's not only um, crafty things that are on this week I think there's loads of loads of different things as well I saw there's things like yoga and everything Oh, it all looks very interesting. So, how are people finding it? Oh, the printmaking class. Oh, was that fun? That sounds, that sounds like something I'd quite like as well. Um, so Emmy's saying that her um, embroidery always seems to to pull on the fabric and the fabric gets quite wavy so I think I think that's happened to me before let me just pause uh, this and I can I can show you I think that's maybe to do with uh, the fabric in the hoop so I find that you need to pull the fabric quite tight so it's nice and flat and and tight on the hoop otherwise what you're describing happens and the fabric becomes a bit wavy because there's not that tension to hold it um, whereas if you have the hoop nice and tight when you push on the fabric there's nowhere for it to go and um, because of that it stays flat and tight while you're doing your design does that make sense so I think maybe you just need to try and pull the fabric a bit tighter in the hoop um, in order for it to stay and also it's easier doing embroidery on non-stretch fabric as well. So doing it on stretch fabric is a little bit different um, and you probably need to interface it first so that it can stay still basically because we, we essentially we don't want our fabric to move at all. So um, maybe just try pulling it a bit tighter in the hoop and see if that does anything. And um, as you say, it could also be um, you're pulling on the threads a little bit too tight, um, but that's um it's just getting used to your fabric and all the stitches and everything so maybe a mixture of pulling the fabric a bit tighter on on the the hoop and pulling the thread a bit less tight that might sort it out so again um when you're finished with that row you can see here um it's a nice um continuous line and again you can practice the curves and then you want to tie a knot in the back again just to secure it and you can tuck that spare thread into the stitches of the line just to keep the back of the project nice and tidy okay good good luck Emmy. i think it will be fine you just need to practice 
um, and get you. And it's also a bit different if you're using different fabrics and things. So sometimes it just takes a bit of um, a few attempts just to get it perfect, basically. So. Um, Oh, that's good, Shona, that you can see how I was I was wary that um you might not be able to see. So I'm glad that people can see um how I'm forming the stitches because that's of course very important. Um yes. Oh it sounds like there's lots of interesting classes going on. Okay, so that should be us um finishing our row of back stitching. Hopefully everyone's had a go at doing that. Um and again, if you're watching this back, you can pause and have practice it for as long as you want um but for the purposes of the class i think we should um move on and try the next stitch so again i'm now threading my needle just with a different color because my previous thread had run out so again i've just doubled it back a little bit and then at the end of the thread i'm going to tie a few knots um so we can secure it so our next stitch is also um, a stitch that's going to form a line and it's called a chain stitch. So this, the, these line stitches are sort of building on each other. So the running stitch is the most basic one and then we move up to a back stitch and now we'll be moving to a chain stitch. So again, we've prepared our needle and thread and you just want to come up anywhere in your hoop from the back of the fabric. So I will come up here and then make one stitch again about a centimeter and this time we're going to move up we're at the back of the fabric with our needle and thread and we're going to move our needle backwards by half the stitch length and then we're going to bring it up to the front of the fabric through the threads of the previous stitch if that makes sense so i'm wondering if you'll be able to see if i hold it up closely but basically you want to bring the needle up through the threads of the stitch. So you should have two threads forming the stitch. So you, when you bring the needle up, you go between them. And then, so you're, you've come up in the middle of the stitch there. And then you again want to create one more stitch about a centimeter away. So you're sort of overlapping the stitches by half of the stitch length if that makes sense and then again we want to go backwards by half the stitch length which again is quite difficult when I'm this far away from it and you want to bring the needle up between can you see there the needles coming up between the two threads of the stitch and then you just want to keep doing that and this forms a really nice um, compact line. And I think this looks really good um, if you're creating, I keep referencing sort of botanical embroideries because that's what I create quite a lot. I like um, drawing plants and flowers and things. And I think that this chain stitch is really nice for stems and creating leaves. I think it gives it a bit more texture. So again, you just want to keep practicing that. And this one takes a little bit more concentration just to make sure that your needle's coming up through the stitches. But again, that's, that's why I love it. It forces me to concentrate and not think about anything else. Vera said that she's made a colorful patchwork quilt that includes some white squares that my grandchildren have signed. I hope to embroider over their signatures. That's a lovely idea. And these these three stitches will be great for embroidering signatures because um, presumably they'll be um, they'll be lines. So you can you can use any of these stitches to help you create the words. Yeah, that's a lovely idea. So again, we just want to practice going straight. This stitch takes um, a bit a bit longer to do. Um, and then you can practice um, curving the line again. And it just takes some patience and a bit of peace and quiet sometimes, I think. I always find that when I when I do hand stitching, I sort of stop worrying about other stuff and 
um, stop thinking about everything that I've got to do and I just focus on um, hand stitching. So that's why I really like it. And that's why I really like embroidery. So, Do people have any, I know Vera said uh, she's got plans for her embroidery. Does anyone have any other ideas about what they might like to embroider? Any upcycling projects or um, you could also, uh, I think jeans are a great thing to um, add embroidery onto, onto the back pockets. It looks really nice. Um, or you can cover up stains um, or cover up holes in garments as well. So yeah, loads of ideas. So hopefully everyone um, who wants to has had a wee go at the chain stitch. And if I just pull my thread to the back, you can see that has created a nice straight um, complete line so it's uh, not got any gaps in it and it just looks a bit more textured than the back stitch. You might not be able to see it in the, the quality of my video, <laughs> but in real life it looks a bit more textured. And especially if you do the chain stitch with three threads on your needle, then it gives it quite a full look and I think it looks really nice. So I'm gonna tie that off. So those are our first three stitches. Um, so Janet said, does your thread get twisted using a long thread? Yes, some, sometimes it does. Um, and basically the way to get about it is either using a short thread or, well, basically just going quite slowly to try and avoid twisting it um, or tangling it in the process. But yeah, sometimes it does get twisted and that's very frustrating, especially if you're in the middle of a design. Um, but you can also just use shorter sections of thread and, and re-thread your needle a bit more, and that's okay too. But it's very annoying. There's not much we can do about that, unfortunately. <laughs> so uh, that's us practiced our three line stitches. So we have our running stitch, back stitch, and chain stitch. So when I'm embroidering a design, I... The first thing I like to do is uh, do any outlines. So these three stitches are great for doing that. Um, so if pretend we, we're doing a design of a embroidery, so we've outlined everything and now we want to fill any designs in. So a stitch that's great for filling in um, any shapes is a satin stitch. So I'm gonna draw onto my hoop now, a small shape. So I'm gonna do a square in my bio row. Don't use a biro, use a fabric pen. Uh, so I'm just gonna do it here, just a square, just to, to show you how to do a satin stitch. So as I said before, this stitch is great for filling in, um, filling in shapes. Um, and something I should have mentioned before is one thing I really like to do when creating embroidery designs is because you're using two threads in your needle, you have the chance to combine colours as well. So if I show you my latest um, project, um, this orange, you can see here that the, the outside of the orange is solid and then the white sections are solid, but the segments are actually a mixture of orange and yellow thread. So I did that by threading my needle with one orange and one yellow thread, and then it just creates a really nice um, combined color when doing the design. Anyway, that was a side note that I wanted to mention. So we're gonna be doing a satin stitch. I recommend just drawing a small shape to practice with. So I've just got a small square. And again, thread your needle, double it back a little bit and add a knot at the end. So the first thing we want to do, we have our square is come up, through the back at one side of the design. So here. And then take your needle back down on the other side of the design. So you can see there, I've formed a pink line across the bottom of that square. And then you want to, on the underside of your fabric, go back to the original side and bring your needle up right next to that first stitch. I'm gonna to need to, to look a bit closer in order to get it right next to it. 
but you can see I'm bringing the needle up right next to that first stitch. And then you want to put it back down into the fabric right next to the first stitch as well. So essentially we're forming the stitches just a thread apart in the fab, like a thread of the fabric apart. So you can see there, that's going to form a stitch right next to it. And we just want to keep repeating this. So we go back to the first side, bring our needle up right next to the previous stitch. Like that. Take our needle over to the other side. Pop it into the fabric. And you can see it's starting to create a nice solid colour. So you just want to keep doing this the whole way along your design. And again, this takes a little bit more concentration just to get it perfect. Yeah, just creating a solid colour. And we just keep practising this. So that's called a satin stitch and that's a really good way to fill in shapes. So you can outline the shapes first as well and then fill them in with a satin stitch if you want to, if it makes you feel better, if you just have it um, a bit more set out, or you can do it after you've um, drawn the design on. So you just want to keep going. Again, just taking your time to make sure the threads come up right next to each other and they're creating a solid colour. And you can also, um, you don't have to embroider straight onto a garment or something. You can also um, create more of a, um, a decoration for your house as well. So you can, you can get a nicer piece of fabric than the one I'm using and um, create a design and then you can keep it in the hoop and add, use it as a bit of a wall hanging as well. Or you can take it out of the hoop and put it in a frame um, just to add a nice little bit of decoration to your, um, to your craft room. So Fiona said, could you come back up on the same side to save some thread? Yes, so I was gonna mention that. So that is something you could do and I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that. So um, I'm coming, I'm, so I'm going down on this side of my, my um, design and instead of going back to the first side, you can decide to just come up right next to where you've put your needle in. And that way you're not continually going backwards and forwards. So yes, that's gonna save you a lot of thread. I've found with my, um, just through practicing it, and don't know, it might just be my technique. Um, for some reason, satin stitch has never been my best embroidery stitch. Um, I found that I get better results when I um, use a bit more thread and go backwards and forwards. I don't know why. Um, but I know people do it this way to save on thread. Um, so you're very right, you can you can do it either way. It's completely up to you. I find that sometimes if you're coming back up right next to where you've just gone in, you might end up seeing that little thread of the fabric. Um, but again, that it might just be the way I'm doing it. I might be pulling too tightly or something. So, that's the basis of our satin stitch. And you can see there, I'm starting to fill in that little square really nicely um, and it's a nice solid color. And again, you could combine the threads on your needle and, um, and color in um, to mix the colors rather than having a solid one. Um, so then we want to secure and hopefully people have had a, a good go at practicing that. Let me know if, if anyone wants me to slow down or repeat anything as well, I'm more than happy to do that. And so this is a really good example of how you can tuck your spare threads in. So I've knotted my, um, my thread at the back and I'm just gonna tuck it into those stitches that I've made just a couple of times and then pull it. And then I'm going to cut the thread nice and small. And that way 
the spare end of the thread is nice and hidden, basically, just to keep everything nice and tidy on the back. Especially if you're going to be wearing the garment, so you want it to, you don't want the inside to be a mess, basically. So, the last stitch that I'm going to be showing you. Um, so, Sue said, if you're doing a larger area, would you break it down to two different blocks? Yes, so... A satin stitch is great, but you can't do too big of an area because then um, the threads become just too long on the front of the design and they can start catching on things. So you're very right. What you would do in that situation is separate the area into two and then you can do two separate rows of satin stitch. And you can do a different type of stitch called long and short stitch. And basically what that does is, so you've got two sides say you're doing a, a, a rectangle so you've got two sides of the rectangle and you're going to go up one side first and then back down the other and when you're going up one side you can decide to do one short stitch and then one long stitch and you can change the length of the stitches that you do and then on the other side of the design you're filling in you can then match those stitches to the length of the, the ones on the other side in order to fill it in and make a solid design if that makes sense and that way instead of it being two solid rows of satin stitch it's a bit more overlapping and it looks a bit more continuous rather than it being really obvious that it's two separate sections if that makes sense so that's actually what I did on this design here so I used a, a long and short stitch in these sections you can see it would be too big to do a satin stitch here because the stitches would just become a bit loose. So I did some short and some long and then on the middle I would do some short and some long in order to match up to the previous stitches and to create a continuous colour. Does that make sense? Hopefully that made sense. But that's a very good point. You don't want your stitches to be too long in a satin stitch. Okay, so I'm just going to re-thread my needle and then um, teach you the last stitch, which is my favorite stitch. So again, just need to separate my threads. And um, these stitches are really, um, really the start of em embroidery stitches. There's honestly endless ones, but I find that even with these basic ones, I can create um, the designs that I want um, and there's lots of scope as well for when you use different colors, it gives it a different look, or if you, it depends, you know, if you add two threads onto the needle or three, that also gives it a different look. Then some sections look a bit fuller than others. So you can really just experiment and make the design what you want it to be, which is what's so great about embroidery. You can really make it personalized to what you want. So our last stitch is called a French knot. And it's my favorite stitch just because I just love the way that it looks. It gives designs a lot more texture and it's really easy to do. So again, threaded my needle with two strands of thread and I'm gonna be using it on my practice hoop. So you want to come up from the back side of the fabric. And this one might be a bit more difficult to show you up close to the camera. But what essentially what we're going to be doing is forming a bit of a knot around the thread. So I'm going to tilt my camera down so you can maybe see it a bit better. Okay, come over here. So what we want to do is with the thread that you've just pulled up from the from the back side of the fabric, you want to hold on to the, the spare threads. And then with your needle, you want to twist the thread around your needle three or four times. I'm going to go three times just to show you. So can you see that there? My thread is twisted around my needle three times. And then I want to insert it into the fabric right next to where I came up. And then you can sort of see it's starting to form. And what we want to do is hold on to the thread gently and then gently pull the needle through nice and slowly. And once we pull it through, you can see it's formed a little knot in the fabric um, that just gives it a really nice, really nice texture. Um, 
and this is this is a great technique to use. So I'll show you one of my designs, um, the one that I brought with me. So this was on a shirt. I added this embroidery to, and you can see in the middle of the flowers, I've done um, lots of French knots for the middle. I think it, it gave the middle of the flower lots of texture. And then I also added it onto the outside of the design just for extra little bits of um, like a little pop of colour, basically. So, yeah, you can just have a go at practising some French knots. Um, again, oh, thank you, Emmy. <laughs> I, I embroidered that. Well, actually, I made the shirt as well and then embroidered onto it. That was one of my um, first lockdown projects. So I had a bit more time then <laughs> to spend on the embroidery. But thank you. And I also wore it on one of the episodes of the Sewing Bee because I was very proud of it. <laughs> um, so we can just keep practicing our French knots. And again, this technique just takes a few goes to get used to just because um, sometimes the thread can become a bit um, tangled and things. So you just want to go nice and slowly at the start to practice. So I'll go over it again. So you want to bring your, your thread up and then you want to twist it around your needle a few times. So basically, the more times you twist it around your needle, the bigger your knot will be. So this time I'll do four. And then you want to insert the needle right next to where it came up. Hold on to that thread, that side of the thread, while you pull the needle through. And that helps prevent it get tangled. And just pull it through nice and slowly. And you've got a little French knot. And I just love the way the French knots look. They make me happy. And um, so again, you can just keep practicing that technique. And then um, you can also use French knots to create, um, you know, to fill in gaps and designs. So you can do loads of them next to each other um, that creates a really textured, bobbly look. That's, as I said, is great for the middle of flowers or um I don't know anything really you can I don't would make a really good sheep I think as well a random thing that I just thought of um so yeah just taking your time to practice that as you can see I've managed to get my my threads twisted in the back so don't do that <laughs> have people ha um had had some luck practicing practicing any of the stitches um People might have just been watching now and then they're going to have a go later. That's absolutely fine as well. Um, so, yeah, feel free to practice as long as you want. Um, those are the basic stitches that I use um, to create my embroidery designs. And I find that they're all I need to, to get going, really. And as I said before, I like to outline my design first and then fill in the gaps with stitches like satin stitch, a long and short stitch and French knots. Um, to add a bit of design as well at the end. Um, if you do create any designs from this, um, the embroidery stitches that you've learned today, I would really, really love to see them. Um, so you can send them to me on Instagram is probably the best place. My handle is at Serena Sews with an underscore at the end. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see anything that you create. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed this session today. And if you have any other questions about anything, then just pop them on the chat and I'll do my best do my best to add to them but yeah thank you for coming along today to the session and if you're watching it um in time again yeah thank you very much <laughs>